Yeah, combine. Combine, is that what it was? Okay, all right. Well, Richard, good well, morning. Well, Bobby, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> You're there, down. I'm doing fine, thank you. You know, Richard, we're in a lot of trouble, you and me, right here this morning, <coughs> because as you can see, I'm the lead-off hitter here, mm. a whole room full of other interviewers waiting to come in. And it's your first interview, and I hope you get everything fresh. Well, everything that fresh. You're gonna get the same questions a hundred times today, but you get the first one. That's great. That's great. Anyway, we have to be scintillating, both of us, or we're in big trouble. So we'll be scintillating. Well, okay. it's now 6:30 in the morning here in Chicago, and uh, <laughs> we're gonna pretend to be scintillating. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Richard, I yeah. have to tell you straight away that. People were saying last night after the screening, Richard Gere's best role since An Officer and a Gentleman, Mayo. Do you think so? Oh, I don't know. You know, they're all difficult, but I do. I, I think this is probably more, more of an acceptable role than I've done in a while. More of a mainstream kind of role, but it's a very rich role. It's one that I responded to immediately when I read it. Uh, has a lot to do with, um, look, any actor only has his own emotions and his own memories to work on, which are also part of how his, his fantasy life, creative life, is, is, uh, is um, explored also. So I had this, this background where um, my grandfather had a dairy farm in uh, Pennsylvania, and my father grew up on that farm, and as a kid I was around there quite a bit. So it was a, a way to get back into that whole lineage of where my, my people came from. Plus this thing of brothers is always an interesting well to go to. And the last time I'd explored that was in uh, Blood Brothers, which was almost 10 years ago, nine, 10 years ago. Um, so I think periodically to go back into those areas and re-explore them is, is uh, replenishing to one's spirit. It's also very creative. How do you think farmers who are finding themselves in the same position you people in the movie find yourselves in, how do you think they'll react? Well, we had a lot of farmers working on this who related to it perfectly. I mean, they were advisors and we rewrote a lot of stuff based on their experiences. Um, unfortunately, the problem in the movie is they have too much rain <laughs> as opposed to the problem now. But uh, the outcome is the same. The, the Banks are foreclosing and uh, crop prices are down and, and uh, just a rough time for the farmer right now. It's mostly coming out of a, a period in the 70s when the uh, land prices were terribly inflated and farmers were borrowing money on those inflated prices. When the prices went down, the banks foreclosed because the loans in some cases were worth much more than the land was. Um, you know, I think farmers are going to understand this. Uh, I'm not going to tell what the episodes are in the movie, but they certainly reflect what is going on in the country and has been going on for years. Do you think some farmers will think that he's too much over the edge? Well, as I say, it's real. Uh, almost everything that's in this, and there's some rather aberrant behavior in this film, comes out of the newspapers. It's all real stuff. In fact, uh, the bank scene, uh, happened not far from where we actually filmed it, uh, although in reality it was much more extreme than, than what happened in the film. Um, so I don't think anything's out of whack there. I think probably it's a drama, you know, so you put a lot more dramatic situations together than one would normally have in a life and compress them. And it might seem it's extreme, but these are extreme times, you know. What we made great pains, I think, to create a character there who was normal, hardworking guy in the beginning. You know, who just snaps. Yeah. So I think if you if you relate to the base character and who he is, you'll take the trip with him. Richard, I've been doing this business more years than you've been an actor, I think. Uh, it's certainly more years than you've been a movie actor. And this is our first time to ever meet. And I so looked forward to this interview, chance to get to talk well, with you, nice. because I admire your work. Thank you. 
Why did you decide now to do these television interviews? Oh, I needed the money, you know. I'm busted. <laughs> Black broke. They're giving me. How much you paying me for this? <laughs> huh? <laughs> Speak up! <laughs> no, I'm not getting a penny for this. But uh, it's uh, we made this film in a different philosophy than I have made other films. Um, I think the only other film on this scale that I had made, production scale, uh, was Days of Heaven, which we made for about three million dollars. Looks like fifty, but we made it for about three. Which uh, that takes place in Texas also. This is the five minute mark, everyone. <laughs> 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 so uh, we made this for around five million dollars, which meant that no one got paid. Okay. So, so we all had an emotional investment in this as, as well as a financial one that, that it does well. Uh, and my, all of us had to believe very much in this film to go ahead and make it. Therefore, I'm here, you know, happy to see that, uh, that it's getting the coverage it should and people are going to see the film. Richard, one other question that is not related to this film, but I have to ask you out of just extreme curiosity. I heard that you were offered the male lead in Fatal Attraction. Is that true? Yeah, but I'm sure other people were too. You know, there's a lot of films like that that are offered to a lot of people before it settles where it settles. Did you turn it down or they just... I've, yeah, but like I say, everyone turns down a lot of films. Why did I've you turn it down? Didn't respond to it just didn't respond to it. Simple as that. But I like the film, you know, and um, I thought Adrian did a terrific job with it, and, and Michael, who's a friend of mine, did a terrific job with it. Really terrific job. There might be five or six films a year that I have turned down that end up tremendously successful, <laughs> you know, and five or six that, that Michael turns down that ends up tremendously successful. So it's not rare. But when he stepped up there to get that Academy Award, did you say, rats, blew it? I didn't say blew it, but I'm looking <laughs> at my bank account, and I'm like, oh, man. You know, like four films that year, each one of them ended up being $100 million movies that I had to said, nah, I don't think so. <laughs> but I don't care. When That's you're not what my life is about. I don't care. When you're considering a role, you don't stop to think it's commercial, it isn't? No. No concern to me. No, the only one I actually ever approached that way at all was No Mercy. And frankly, it tur didn't turn out well for me to do that. Um, I liked that film and I liked the people I was doing, doing it with, but um, the motivation was that this is a commercial film that's going to reach a large audience. Um, and my work just doesn't function that way. I just have to do what, what I respond to. And if people like it, that's great. And uh, hopefully they will, but if they don't, that's okay, too. Richard, I have to tell you, I like this movie a lot. Good. I'm Miles glad. from Home. I, I was telling the crew, you can ask them, telling them earlier, said, good film. Is that true? Did you say that? Cameraman's saying no. <laughs> <laughs> Cameraman was busy. He wasn't listening. <laughs> but anyway, it is a wonderful film. You're excellent in it. I like your portrayal. I like Kevin. I like everybody in it. First-rate film. Good. I'm glad. And by golly, I hope you make a buck or two. That would be okay. All right. Maybe an award or two. Who knows? Anyway, and thank you for making yourself available to us. And please, let us talk again sometime. I'll okay? see you down there next time. I love it. Okay, Bob. Thank you, Richard. Take care. You're great. <laughs> Richard, already people are saying this is your best role since Mayo in An Officer and a Gentleman. Do you think so? Ask it again. We got our road crew down. Okay. Yeah. Richard, already people are saying this is your best role since Mayo in An Officer and a Gentleman. Do you think so? How do you think farmers who find themselves in this same position are going to react to the film? Do you think some of them are going to say he's too much over the edge?
Richard, in all the years I've been doing interviews and all the years you've been an actor, this is our first time to meet. Now, why did you finally decide to do these television interviews? <laughs> when you're considering a role, do you stop to think whether or not it'll be a commercial success? I understand that you turned down the male lead in Fatal Attraction. Why? <laughs> but why didn't you want to do the role? When Michael Douglas stepped up there and got the Academy Award, did you say, rats, I blew it? Richard, I have to tell you, this is a wonderful film, and you're just wonderful in it. Ask the crew if I didn't say that before you came in here. Okay, thank you.